Based on the progress we've made in previous episodes, we now almost have all of the code in place in our NQL5 risk management module to be able to calculate the value at risk for a single asset. Today, I'm going to focus on how to consume this module from both scripts and EAs. It's important to understand how to do this before we use this basic foundation to build on in future episodes where we'll calculate value at risk for any number of assets and from there move on to building the efficient frontier capability. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third-party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So, if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Today I take a closer look at the code that's required from scripts and EAs to start putting the risk management module that we've developed into use. Let's make a start. So by the end of this episode we'll be in a position to be able to calculate the value at risk for a single position using this formula. So this is where we left the code last time. We had calculated the standard deviation of returns for a particular asset using this function here. We then converted a lot size to a nominal monetary amount using this code here. And so finally, we now need to replace this code with the final part of the formula, which is the one we just saw a moment ago, which is 1.65 multiplied by the standard deviation of returns multiplied by the nominal value. Let's just get rid of this comment here. And then because this is the final piece of the puzzle, we can now return from this function, indicating that if we get to this point, we perform the calculation correctly. And it's just worth noting that the value that I'm setting here is actually a publicly available property of the class that we've defined. And so this can then be accessed multiple times if required without calculating that value again. You do of course need to be sure that nothing's changed though in terms of the positions that you have open when you do this. So let's come back to our calling script now and just take a closer look at how we actually utilize this particular class to give us the information we need. So on the first line here, we are declaring an object called portfolio risk. And that is based on the class C portfolio risk man, which of course is the class we defined here in our include file. And we're passing that two parameters. The first is the value at risk timeframe that we want to use. And if you remember previously, where this comes into play is with the standard deviation calculation. So when you calculate the returns, they're calculated based on this time frame. So if this time frame was daily, then you'd be looking at the close to close price across two days. If it was hourly, then you'd be calculating your standard deviation hour to hour using the close price of each hour to calculate the return percentage. And then the standard deviation periods here is simply the number of periods we use in that standard deviation calculation. So this instantiates the object based on this particular class. And from there, we can then start to access the publicly available methods and properties of that class. So if I just come up here above to show you what you will have access to. So we have the object name, put a dot and you can see that we've got access here to two functions. One is the constructor itself 
and the second is the method that calculates the value at risk. And then here underneath, you can see we've also got access to the property called single position VAR. So these are effectively all of the publicly available properties and methods that we declared in our class here. So as you can see, in this command that follows, I'm just calling this function the calculate var. Passing it the asset name, which was set in one of the input parameters. Passing it the asset loss size, which also was passed in as an input. And as long as that succeeds and returns true, then we output the value at risk to the user interface. And the way we do that, as you can see here, is that we're just bringing back that public property of single position var and then converting that out to a string in order to present it in the user interface. So let's just get rid of this line and compile to make sure we don't have any errors or warnings. And so if we now bring up MT5, we can run this, let's say for Euro Yen and 0.1 lots. We can see that the value at risk for that is 76.94. And remember, because we're using currency pairs, this is going to be quoted in the account currency. So for me, my account is in British pounds. Now, because we chose in the input parameters to use daily bars, based on that assumption that the returns from this particular asset are normal in nature and based around a mean of zero, it's telling me that one in 20 days I could expect a loss of £76.94 or worse. But then for the other 19 out of 20 days, I would expect either a loss less than this or, of course, a profit. And so this now starts to give me a real indication of what the risk is if I were to have this position open. Now, in contrast, let's now look at an alternative asset, natural gas. At the moment, with the current global gas crisis, the volatility of natural gas is significant. Now, this is where you need to start being a little bit careful with the results you're getting because different brokers will quote different assets in different currencies. Now, as it happens, for Darwin X, natural gas is quoted for me in my account currency, i.e. British pounds. But there are other brokers where this will be quoted in US dollars and so on. So you really need to do your homework to properly calculate the value at risk in your own account currency. And you need to perform conversions where necessary. As I say, for Darwin X and for my British pound account, this is quoted in pounds. And so if I perform this analysis on 0.1 lots of XNG USD, the value at risk is now £239.52. So a significantly higher value than for the currency pair we looked at a moment ago. And so again, what this means is that one day in 20, if I was holding this position for the whole of the day, I could expect a loss of £239 or more. And then for 19 days out of 20, I could expect a loss less than this or indeed a profit if the position went my way. And so again, this starts to give real insights into how you should be position sizing within your portfolio in order to balance out risk across different assets. Now, doing this for a single asset is useful and insightful but it doesn't really help us if we want to look at portfolio risk. Because here, of course, you've got the factor of how correlated different assets are with each other that will impact what the actual portfolio risk is. So, for example, if two assets are correlated and we're holding those two assets in the same direction, that will increase the risk. However, if they're negatively correlated, it will actually reduce the risk compared to holding any single position on its own. And so in the next episode, we take the first step in order to start doing that. 
And that first step is to focus on two assets. And then after that, for three, four, five assets, however many, the calculation just remains the same. So the first thing that we'll look at in the next episode is this concept of portfolio standard deviation, because it's that that we need to calculate in order to then feed into the portfolio value at risk calculation. Now, if that episode's already available, you'll see it top right now. Alternatively, you can subscribe using the button below, and that will notify you when that and any future episodes get released. And so now, until next time, trade safe.